Hi there. Today I've got a slightly odd, whimsical news story for you, which I read last week and which links to a childhood pastime, which you may well share with me. And it links to understanding the world's oceans and some artwork in Cornwall. How do you combine all that? Well, here goes. Stay with me until the end to find out. Have you ever played with Lego? That's L-E-G-O. What do you remember building as a child with Lego? Keep listening and you'll hear about how a simple mishap with Lego in 1997 teaches us about today's oceans. That's ocean, O-C-E-A-N, and a mishap That's M-I-S-H-A-P. Notice it's pronounced mishap, not mishap, and it means an unfortunate accident. All the while, you'll be practising your English language understanding and learning new vocabulary as you go. And that word whimsical I used right at the start, that's W-H-I-M-S-I-C-A-L. It means playful, slightly humorous, but also slightly strange and freakish, perhaps. Whimsical. There's a word to add to your vocabulary. And let's weave in playful but practical examples to help you learn words like mishap, whimsical and capsize. Learning new vocabulary is much easier if it's linked to memorable real world contexts so that you can recall these words and use them in conversation. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Anyway, before I do that, if you would like to become a subscriber of Adept English and receive eight extra episodes per month, they're just the same as the podcast, focused on helping you with your English language learning but on lots of topics to keep you interested. You can subscribe and pay on Spotify. So you can listen also on Spotify or you can choose to just do the payment on Spotify and listen to the subscription episodes on a different platform. Go to our website, adeptenglish.com and the frequently asked questions, FAQs, to find out more and for details and instructions on how to subscribe. So, did you ever spend hours as a child playing with Lego? This toy is great for developing all kinds of skills and for using your imagination. My preference was always for building houses. I like to make them with proper pitched roofs. That's roof, R-O-O-F, and that's the thing that goes on the top of your house to keep the rain out. And if it's a pitched roof, that's P-I-T-C-H-E-D, that means it has a slope to keep the rain off. So that's a pitched roof at an angle. I enjoyed making houses with roofs and balconies and verandas and sometimes even a garden. I had Lego pieces that were trees and flowers as well. The other thing, I like to make strange wheeled vehicles and cars. I think vehicle design is a bit beyond me. But I spent many happy hours as a child and then got a second opportunity with Lego, a second wind as an adult when my own children started to play with it. And we just added their collection of Lego to ours. So we have several big boxes of it now. And I confess as an adult to actually buying additional roof tile pieces so I could make better houses. I'm sure there are many adults who still enjoy building with Lego and see it as a hobby and a very valid pastime. Anyway, I think that most people would agree that Lego is an engaging and constructive toy. It helps you appreciate maths and I'm sure it develops children's brains. But this week I read an article from the New York Times which was talking about the great Lego spill of 1997. A spill, S-P-I-L-L, that happens when you tip something out of a container. You spill it. So it's a noun and a verb. Anyway, apparently in 1997, nearly 5 million Lego pieces were in a shipping container on a cargo ship called the Tokyo Express. When a freak wave nearly capsized the ship, the verb to capsize, C-A-P-S-I-Z-E, means to tip over. And it's usually used 
specifically to mean ships, boats, canoes, tip over, they capsize and whatever's on board ends up in the water. The Tokyo Express lost all of its shipping containers, 62 of them. Shipping containers are those huge metal boxes that carry our goods on the seas. Presumably, there must have been a lot of other things in those shipping containers, as well as the Lego. But this event is known as the Great Lego Spill of 1997. And even now, 27 years later, Lego pieces are still washing up on the coast of Cornwall and much further afield. That means further away, on beaches in places like Ireland, Belgium and France. And even as far as Georgia, Florida, North and South Carolina in the United States. In a strange twist, this particular shipment of Lego lost in the shipping container was themed on the sea. So what is washing up on these shores and coasts? Octopuses, sea dragons dinghies, canoes, scuba equipment, all sized for Lego people, of course, fishing spears, sharks. So many people have found so much Lego, in fact, that it even has its own Facebook page called Lego Lost at Sea, as well as accounts on X and Instagram. And it's where people report and compare their Lego beach finds. There's even a bit of competition between people around the rarer items. Apparently there were over 33,000 black sea dragons, but only 514 green sea dragons have been found, making them more collectible. It seems that people will enjoy collecting anything, doesn't it? A similar sort of incident occurred in 1992, when thousands of rubber ducks and other bath toys were lost in the Pacific Ocean. This one is called the Friendly Floaties Spill. That's F-L-O-A-T-E-E. -E. That's an American word for toys which are full of air and designed to float on the surface of water. And the effect of the friendly floaty spill? Well, it's even been studied by an oceanographer. That's a scientist interested in the oceans. Dr. Curtis Ebersmeyer was able to learn a lot about ocean currents. A current, C-U-R-R-E-N-T, is a flow of water within the sea or a river. We might talk about strong currents being dangerous for swimmers. Don't get that word mixed up with current, C-U-R-R-A-N-T. That's a little fruit, like a black currant. Anyway, 28,000 of these rubber ducks were lost from a ship travelling from China to Seattle. Some of these rubber ducks were over 10 years voyaging, floating on the sea before they made landfall before they arrived on a coast somewhere. Confirmed sightings of these rubber ducks continued until the mid-2000s. And they travelled amazingly far. The ducks turned up on the coasts of Europe, as well as faraway coasts like Hawaii. The friendly floaty spill has helped oceanographers study currents and realise that floating objects take much longer to travel between continents than they'd realised before. And similarly, Professor Andrew Turner of the University of Plymouth in the UK said that the Lego spill had been interesting and a lot had been learned from it, partly because of the interest of the general public and the online reporting of where pieces were found. It would have cost a lot of money to do that as a research project, to do it intentionally. So there is a small upside of it happening as an accident. Now, given that I've talked before about the evils of plastic in the oceans and the seas, I'm not making light of plastic lost at sea. But the rubber ducks and the Lego are but a fraction, a tiny part of the plastic that enters our seas every year. And they're one-off accidents probably doing much less damage than an oil spill, let's say. But the issue of lost shipping containers may be bigger than we think. A survey in 2014 by the World Shipping Council found that 2,683 containers were lost between 2011 and 2013 alone. Many don't get reported, so the actual number could be much higher. And of course, plastic items last much longer than other types of item. Even false teeth have shown up 
on beaches around the world. And for every plastic item that shows up intact, that's I-N-T-A-C-T, it means whole, not broken up, that's at least one plastic item that hasn't degraded into the dreaded microplastics. And if people like to collect them, then at least they're being removed. So not only is there a community of people who found Lego on Facebook, scientists using these plastic items to help their studies and to learn more, but there's also an artist who makes his work from found items like the Lego on the beach. Rob Arnold is an artist from Cornwall in the UK and he creates his artwork from plastics that he's recovered from the English coast. Part of his purpose is to do his bit removing plastic from the environment while spreading awareness of the problem. Rob has learned over the years where on the beaches and coves near his home waste plastic from the sea piles up, brought by different currents of course. He collects the pieces, including Lego pieces from the great Lego spill and uses it to make his artwork. Rob Arnold has also featured in a BBC news item where he'd made a piece of artwork, which was the Nescafe logo, all made from bits of plastic packaging from Nescafe products, which had washed up on the Cornish beaches. His purpose? to shame Nescafe and other big companies into thinking more about the type of packaging they use. Good for Rob Arnold. So that was a bit of a story. From Lego to rubber ducks, to spills and shipping containers, through oceanography, ending at Cornish artwork which challenges the big corporates about the environment. I hope you followed all of that and if you didn't, please listen again. There's some great vocabulary in this podcast. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.